Hey everybody. I just got done euthanizing my purple spotted gudgeon and I got the whole process on video. I wanted to show people how using clove oil to euthanize a fish is not always as easy and smooth as a lot of people make it sound. I've been led to believe on a lot of occasions that a few drops and the fish will just sort of drift off to sleep and you put a few more drops in and you come back in a little while and the fish is just, you know, kind of gone. And my experience has never been like that. My experience has always been uh, where the fish struggle a little bit. They don't seem to like the clove oil being in the water. If you put more in, they will react more strongly, but they seem to die more quickly. If you put less in, they tend to react a little more slowly, but the process takes much longer. And in tonight's video, I had a few issues with it not happening as fast as I expected it to. The fish struggled and we got it all on video. This is not a particularly pleasant video. So if you've heard as much as you need to hear about what using clove oil to euthanize a fish is like, then you should probably stop watching here. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and show the whole process. It took about an hour for the fish to finally be done, but it is now gone and we no longer have the purpose spotted gudgeon with us so if you're up for it go ahead and watch the video otherwise be warned that using the clove oil is not always as easy and smooth as a lot of people make it sound so if you're stopping here i'm going to say thanks for watching and if you're watching the rest of it be forewarned you do get to see my fish die it's not the most pleasant video so thanks again i'll see you on the next one hey everybody this is unfortunately going to be the final video we're going to shoot of my purple spotted gudgeon here. Just walked in the room to have a look and check on him. And while he does look nice and calm and peaceful lying on the bottom of the tank right now, he's looking pretty rough. And when I came in a few minutes ago, he was swimming around at the top of the tank and he was sort of bobbing up and down out of the water. He was kind of upside down and he just generally does not look very good at all. So I'm going to get in there with a net and I'm going to scoop him out. We're going to put him in a little bucket or something. And then we're going to add a little bit of clove oil. Come back and check on him after a little bit. And this is going to be basically the final video. And we're going to go through the steps in which I follow to euthanize a larger fish like this. So let me get set up and I'll see you in a second. All right, as I expected, it did not take a whole lot of effort to get him collected up and out of there and once again he's calmed down a little bit I'm trying to save you the unpleasantness of watching him swim all around and corkscrews and up and down he looks really terrible once he starts swimming around so this is what we're using and it smells lovely I gotta say with the lid off but in my experience in the past, I've done this. We're going to put just a few drops in now. And that's about a gallon of water, I guess. So we'll just let that do its thing and we'll come back in a little while and check on him and maybe we'll add a few more drops. But in my experience, when I have done this with the clove oil before, uh, the fish react to it. I've always been told that if we just put a few drops of clove oil in the tank, then the fish will just quietly go to sleep and they won't be bothered by it at all. But my experience has been that when I put some clove oil in the water, the fish definitely react to it as though they're not happy about it being in there at all. So I don't know if that's the case or not, but worst case scenario, it's all going to be over in about 15 or 20 minutes. So that'll be that. So let's get back to it. I'll come back in about 15 minutes and we'll see where we stand. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and I've been kind of watching. I didn't want to have my head over the bucket so that I would be the one disturbing it. I wanted to see whether or not I got any reaction from the oil. And there was a few sporadic, you know, swimming vigorously, swirling around, corkscrewing, and then it would calm down. Did that two or three times, kind of freaking out a little bit. And the last time it did it was just a few minutes ago and it sort of settled down and instead of lying on the bottom on its belly like it was upright, it just sort of ran out of gas and it's now just lying on its side. And I haven't seen it move in several minutes, but I'm not in any hurry 
and I don't want to prematurely take that outside and throw it in the garden. So we're going to add a few more drops of the oil and we're going to let it sit here for another 10 or 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever. And by then it should absolutely be no longer with us. So I think we can just go ahead and end the video there. There's no point really in showing any more of it. You get the idea. But that's how effective clove oil is. It took about 10 minutes. And again, there was a little bit of thrashing, a little bit of swimming around, but not sure if that was associated with the clove oil or just the fact that the fish was expiring. So there you go. Sorry for the bummer, but as I've said before, that's part of the hobby. It's what you got to do sometimes. Oh, look at that. It is moving. So I'm glad I didn't prematurely go ahead and take that outside and chuck it in the garden. So, all right, everybody, I'll stop videoing right here because that's not pleasant to look at. Give me a few minutes and we'll see where we go from here. All right, about 10 minutes after uh, that last segment, I came in and checked and I did see a little tiny bit of movement in the tail. So I put about another half dozen drops of the clove oil in there and it's now been about half an hour. I came in just a few minutes ago and checked and there was no movement whatsoever and there still isn't so i was going to reach in and pull it out of there i guess i still can i didn't want to get the clove oil all over my hands but it's whatever i can always just go wash them off yeah that's definitely no longer a living fish oh my goodness it still is wow this video is turning out to be even worse than I expected. I cannot believe that it's still alive. I was going to just go dump the bucket outside. So once again, I'm glad I stuck my hand in there and touched it because I swore that was dead. I've bumped this bucket half a dozen times. I've rustled the water around. I got zero movement. It wasn't until I actually picked him up until he started moving again. So, all right, I told you, this clove oil stuff is not all it's cracked up to be. Everybody says it's so painless and quick and all that. So, it's probably been about 40 minutes since we started this process now. I'm going to put a few more drops in there, and we'll come back. I know this is miserable, but you're not the ones doing it. You're just having to watch it, so hang on. All right, everybody, I really, really hope this is the final segment of this video. Uh, right after that final clip, I put six or eight more drops in. I gave it ten more minutes, and then I put another six or eight drops, maybe ten, and I dripped them directly over where the fish was laying, and I could see the oil going down through the water and just sort of settling around the fish, and he was over in this corner a little bit at the time, and I gave it ten more minutes, and I, that, I, it, it has to have done away with it by now. The reason it's not in that corner anymore is because I just gave the bucket a little shake uh, to swirl the water around to see if I got any reaction or any movement. I've tapped on the bucket several times. Uh, I'm getting nothing, but I did that before and I even picked the fish up and had it in my hand before it started moving and I realized it was still alive. So I've been wrong before, but let's try again. I'm really, really hoping that we've got a dead fish this time. It certainly feels lifeless. It is very, very limp. So, yeah, I think we finally did it. So, it took an hour. It has been almost exactly an hour since we started. And it is now dead. And I hate doing this because I just, you know, I'm now going to have that smell of cloves so intimately associated with this memory. And it just makes the holidays difficult. You get the smell of cloves all the time in the holidays. And whenever I smell cloves, this is what I think of doing. I think of euthanizing fish when I smell cloves. So maybe I'll start using Pimafix to do this. Pimafix seems to kill fish uh, pretty fast. So maybe I'll start using Pima Fix instead of the clove oil. But there you go, everybody. That was start to finish. I know it's not a pleasant process, but again, it has to be done. And that's the way it is. So I think for all the people out there that always talk about how clove oil is so gentle and easy and you just put a few drops in and they go to sleep and then, you know, that, yeah, it's just, it's not like that. It never is. I've done this about half a dozen times with the clove oil and every time it takes at least half an hour, depending on how much I squirt in there. If I put a lot in, in the beginning, it 
makes the fish really freak out. So if I put a little bit in, we get less freaking out, but we get this longer, slower process. So it's kind of tit for tat. You either do it and get it over with and the fish swims around violently for a little while and then dies, or you do it a little more gently and it takes an hour of having to do this. So this was my evening. So, all right, everybody. Sorry again for the unpleasantness, but you know, that's how it goes. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed for whatever that's worth and I will see you on the next one.